third fastest in the world this year. And on the outside, Beatrice Chibet, world junior cross country champion and African champion over 5,000 meters. A brilliant lineup. 10,000 meter runners stepping down to the 5,000 and 1,500 meter runners stepping up. Speed against strength meets over 12 and a half laps. The women's 5,000 meter final gets underway and the reigning Olympic champion goes straight to the back. Sifan Hassan, out of your picture, has not had an easy season. And there, there are whispers in the distance running fraternity that the Ethiopians could go for a clean sweep here. They have the second, third and fourth fastest athletes in the world this year in this race. Seal is a world indoor silver medalist over the 1500. There's Gide, the big five, just ahead of Sege as Elish McColgan comes round on the outside. Gide's completed the set of global medals over the 10 with a gold here, having got a silver in Doha and a bronze in Tokyo. Gudaf Sege, 5,000 meter bronze last year. And uh, Sifan Hassan, a silver in the 1,500 meters. Maybe you would say out of the three Ethiopians, Sege with that raw speed that almost, almost lived with Faith Kipiegon in the 15. Maybe she is the favorite out of the three Ethiopians. But the Tessan Bekide was magnificent and found wonderful form to outsprint everyone at the end of the 10,000. Pretty steady here as they come round towards the home straight. Tanaka will be itching to hit the front. A really gutsy run to qualify, and it won't be long before she thinks, hang on a minute, we're, we're basically tiptoeing here. Somebody's got to do something. And it's the Tessa Bekide who hits the front. She's having a full on conversation with Dawid Sayum. All three of the Ethiopians conversing. Be fascinating to get some close-up shots of that just to see it's almost as if they're out for a training run and the biggest problem when a big pack run like this Dan they are virtually they really are jogging it's almost ridiculous someone could easily fall at this stage yeah they're clear out into the third lane into the fourth lane as McCoglin comes into picture, what was interesting though was to see the Ethiopians up front having a chat saying, hey, here's what, here's what we're going to do, strategizing during the race. And at last, they have come up with their plan. And it's Gudaf Sege leading. The Tessenbeck Gide is the tallest of the three Ethiopians. She's in third. With Dawid Sayum in second. And now Caroline Kipkarui of Kazakhstan, formerly of Kenya, seventh in the 10,000 metres. She comes through and tucks in behind Gudav Sege with 10 laps to go. And it's not single file, but now at least we've got a, a proper race on our hands. It was almost as if everyone was waiting one of the Ethiopians to decide to go when they were jogging round to the start of the 1500 on the back straight on the previous lap that they were almost at a complete standstill and still on the right of picture in the orange vest no move from Sifat Hassan great work by the camera crew there to show us Granny in the centre of that group the big striding Ailish McColby just towards the back The gap from first to 15th. That's Beatrice Chibet, the World Junior Cross Country Champion from Arnhus. What a great race that was on a beautiful course in Denmark three years ago. She now comes up onto the shoulder of the former Kenyan, Kip Karui. And Latessa and Beth Gide having another conversation here. They almost look like they're smiling, talking to each other. It's far too slow for Gide's liking, and that is why. The long, flowing, striding 10,000 metre champion has decided to hit the front. And I wonder whether this move 
into first place will be a little more definitive than that of her compatriot Gudav Sege. Well, for a while there, it looked like Ide was just running, blocking for the leaders. She would surge ahead and then she would get in front of the Kenyans and she would slow it down just a little bit. I saw her do that two or three different times. Now she's up front. She's going to take her turn at leading this pack. So Gide. Oh my. With that segment. Beatrice Chabet. Another two Kenyans uh, queuing up. Margaret Kipkemboy is the one on the third. She got the silver medal in this event three years ago. Rory Akite is the less decorated. Between Kipkemboy and herself. She's just in around about fifth place at the moment. Well, Kide has gone to the front. But she hasn't really injected too much pace. And once again, a little bit of tip for tap. Sege takes her turn at the front. And little by little, this is surely going to have to get faster. Sifan Hassan has attached herself to the back of that group. Jess Judd is the athlete on the right of picture with the bobbing head and the ponytail. She's become detached from this group. And Amish McColgan of Great Britain is also just at the back of that group of around about 12 or 13 with Sifan Hassan just in front of her the three Americans running all in a line on the inside well as they get to the 200 meter mark they're into a stiff headwind and I think it's probably pretty smart that they almost go single file right there that is where the wind comes right past the tower and onto the front of that back, front of that back straight Sege looking around. And it's Rory Akite on the curb. Sege leading. Gide in second. Akite third. Sayum, the other of the Ethiopians, now in fourth. And how often have we seen this at the front of global distance races, male and female? The might the two East African nations separated by the vast stunning Rift Valley if you are a fan of distance running both Kenya and Ethiopia are stunning countries to visit there's some fantastic trails you can get off road and run in wonderful countryside and you can re you really feel the sense when you run in Kenya and Ethiopia you really do feel that you're somewhere magical when it comes to distance running even if you're just jogging along a seven minute miling there are runners everywhere of all abilities some wearing tracksuits some running in bare feet distance running is part of life in ethiopia and kenya and it's a contributing reason but not the only reason why the ethiopians and the kenyans enjoy so much success on the global stage all of which of course is underpinned by incredible amounts of hard work Yes, there is, a, there is a certain advantage to being born at altitude, but without the graph that goes along with it, the performances wouldn't come. The longer this race goes on, you suspect the more it plays into the hands of Gunas Sege. Just getting an update on the statistics of Kip Karui, she is an excellent runner just on the right of picture there she's the kenyan but she represents kazakhstan so she has that rather distinctive pale blue and yellow vest sege has got brilliant raw speed that's why she was almost able to live with the pace of faith kip Yegon in the 1500 meters very steady again now dan Nobody's really prepared to really go for this and they'll have to at some stage because there's only five laps to go. Well, it's interesting, yeah, it's just, it just looks like a game of cat and mouse right now, but what this is doing, though, is it also, it's also allowing a number of other athletes just to stay in this race. You'd think that the Kenyans and the Ethiopians could just actually pour it on and break away from this pack. But they just continue to lead one another here. Gide, Sege, back and forth, just taking turns. 
doing the work. Side by side. And now, Matess and Beth Gide decides to try and inject some pace. She's had a look over her shoulder. Beatrice Chebet is there for Kenya. Kite on the inside. No move yet from the other of the Ethiopians. Now it's saying we've got a world indoor silver over to 1500. It's, it's not a definitive move. But she keeps looking round. This game of cat and mouse has to come to the boil at some stage soon. Sifan Hassan is still attached to the back of that group. Elish McColgan beginning to lose ground. She's just on the right of picture. Gudaf Sege is the second of the Ethiopians. She's not quite as tall as Natessa Bekide. And Gide looks over her shoulder again and motions with her right arm. Come on, let's do something. And Sege responds, her teammate. Perhaps Natessa Bekide feels the longer they allow the rest to stay in this group the likelier it is that they don't have the last couple of laps all their own way the rest are beginning to queue up Kim Kenboy the silver medalist from 2019 don't rule out the the other Kenyan Kip Karui who represents Kazakhstan she's back in around about fifth place with Sayum in sixth good running as well by the Americans too stay in touch in this final Schweitzer and Cranny just towards the back of that group three laps to go now and it still feels cagey and Latessa Bekide still looking over her shoulder the Ethiopians have done the clean sweep in 2005 and 2015 great atmosphere in the stadium the, the crowd here are not just interested in sprints and they're not just interested in American gold, silver and bronze. They've roared for some of the East African nations in the distance events so far and there'll be a big cheer as they get towards the bell but there's a little bit of work to do yet. Now Gide goes to the front. Surely she's going to strike out now. It's fractionally quicker. They had a 71, that's a 70. And Gunaf Sege in second place is having a look at the big screen. And she won't necessarily like what she's seen because all the big contenders are right behind her. And we haven't really spoken about Sifan Hassan, the Olympic champion. She did an unprecedented double in Doha, winning the 1500 and the 10,000. No one's ever done that and won a medal at the 1500 after winning the 5 and the 10 last year. She was off the podium in the 10,000 metres, but with 800 to go, she's just at the back of that group. Three Ethiopians, but two Kenyans are there. And the athlete from Kazakhstan. Surely, this is playing into the hands of the 1500 meter specialists. And if Sifan Hassan can rediscover her explosive speed, maybe she can get herself on the podium here after being bitterly disappointed in the 10,000 meters. Remember, the 5,000 meter Olympic champion has had a hard year. She started her season late, but Hassan responds. Sege leads from Gide. Beatrice Chebet and Kip Kemboy are right up there. Kite has drifted off the pace, the third of the Kenyans. It's anyone's race now as they come round with 500 metres to go. It's been one of the cagiest races over 12 and a half laps I can ever remember. But now it's about to explode into life. They take the bell in the final of the women's 5,000 metres. Gudaf Sege leads. She got a silver in the 1500. In second place, Sifan Hassan. She's the Olympic champion. What a fantastic victory it would be for her. She's done virtually nothing all season. But they ran the early lap so slowly, it's played into the sprinter's hands. Beatrice Chebet. The world junior cross-country champion trying to come up on the outside of Sege. And Sege has drifted towards the outside of lane one. And that's allowed Sifan Hassan to come through on the inside. They're running so close together, these three. It's a miracle they haven't tripped each other up. Hassan has got the inside line. But has she got the speed? It's been a difficult season for the Dutch woman. 
Sergei's coming past her. Silver in the 1500. Little by little, Sergei's pulling away. A great effort by Chebet, the cross country specialist. But Gunaf Sergei takes the 5,000 meter title. Chebet takes the silver. And it's a bronze for Dawit Sayon. It was just too slow for the likes of Latessa Bet Gide to live with the explosive pace at the end. It was so tense and so tactical. And despite her mistake of letting Sifan Hassan come through on the inside with 200 to go, Kudas Sege was not to be denied the title. Silver in the 15, but it's all gold tonight over the five. And Sege is hoisted aloft by her friends and teammates. Fantastic for Gudaf Sege. She tastes the podium on a memorable, memorable evening. Wow. That was really something, Rob. And I wasn't 100% sure what we were watching. So many different moves. That race absolutely had it all. Lead changes. And just when you thought with a lap to go, is Safan Hassan back and ruin this all? Spoil it all for the Ethiopians. But it was just too much. You said the 1,500 meter runners were going to make their move with a lap to go, and they certainly did. Sagay certainly has shown people what she's capable in the 1,500 meter, in the 1,500 meters. But Hazan definitely made a run of it. But talk about the teamwork throughout the entire race by the Ethiopians. The Kenyans could never really quite get together and work together as a group. But it was the Ethiopians controlling that pace and that entire race until the end when it was a free for all sprint. And I did wonder at one stage whether they'd made a mistake to let Hassan through on the inside. Dawit Sayam, a wonderful bronze from her. Gide was fifth in the end. Kemboy was fourth. Great, great silver for Beatrice Chubet. She came up onto Gudaf's Gudaf Sege's shoulder, but just didn't quite have the raw pace down the final 50. And that was almost an inevitability because they let the early pace drift. But the Ethiopians are already singing and dancing. It's been an excellent championship for them, it really has. So Gide took the uh, 10, and Sege's taken the 5. She'll be over the moon with that. It was a brilliant effort from Sifan Hassan, because she has had a horrible season that started really late. She only registered her first finish over the 5,000 earlier in July. So she got herself in the right position, but unlike Doha and unlike Tokyo, when she came round the final bend on the inside, she just didn't quite have the speed and the stamina in her legs to hang on for a medal. But you're quite right. I mean, it, it was as if they were out for a Sunday morning jog in the early stages. Well, it's so unusual, though, to see teammates like that getting up front, talking to each other, but... It was looked like it looked like they had a plan. You see, Gide would just block Chibet. She would just surge ahead, get in the front, and then she would slow things down. But Hassan had had enough of the playing with about a lap to go. And she needs to create a little space for herself because she has such a long stride and long legs. This move to the inside, a tricky, tricky move right there. Onto the rail. And I thought, oh no, here goes Hassan. She's going to ruin this for the Ethiopians. Let's see what she's got left. It was a mistake by Sege just to drift towards the outside of the lane. I think she did it because Chebet was quite close to her. At this point, Dan, they were running so close together that it, it is a miracle none of them tripped each other up. And that was the point at which Hassan's lack of fitness began to tell. And Gudaf Sege just wound it up and wound it up. Chebet did really well to respond to the extent to which she did. The former world junior champion and world cross country champion, Agudaf Sege, savoured every single second of that moment. So often it hasn't been her turn to finish on top spot. But she got it right tactically. And she at last collects the global gold she's striven towards for years. meter speed saw her home over 12 and a half laps thousands of miles in the bank and that's why it means so much
Gugav Sege continues a great week for the Ethiopians, taking the 5,000 metre title. Excellent silver for Beatrice Chibet and Dawit Seum makes it two Ethiopians on the podium. The 10,000 metre champion, Latessen Gide, finished in fifth. Schweitzer didn't manage to finish. Tough running for the Brits, the Japanese and the Americans.